Why don't we uh, just pause for a moment, just as a moment of uh, silence and solidarity as human beings, that we're all experiencing, uh, we're being abused uh, by watching what's happening in the Ukraine, and we're watching these innocent, beautiful people, children, uh, it's just beyond words to describe. So let's just pause and put your heart out to all these people and hope that they get the help they need and maybe we could come up with something a good shepherd that we could bring to them as well. But just have a moment of silence in honor of these beautiful human beings. Now, I'd like to ask you to stay with this, with your eyes closed, and pay attention to your breath. And the word breath or spirit, pneuma, and God dwelling within each one of you. And that this breath, this in and out, this breath, the intimacy of your breath within you. You are one with your breath. It's almost like your life energy is that breath. And think of that breath as the living God in you. Jesus says, I come that you will realize that you are one with the living God as I know that I am one with the living God. Jesus knew he was one with the living God. And he came to teach us that we also are one with that living God, dwelling within us, giving us strength, power, insight, wisdom, healing, the ability to let go, the ability to live knowing that there's no such thing as being alone. And Jesus says, I want you to live in that awareness so that you will live your life with a joy so that my joy is in you and you are in me. Amen. Okay, so let's let that be our opening prayer. So, and then we'll get into that about like, the, it's such a subtle thing. Remember that passage from Kings where they went there and it wasn't in the thunder and it wasn't in the fire and it wasn't in the, 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 uh, the loud sounds, but then there was this gentle whisper, you know, uh, to, to be able to tune into the, the subtlety and the softness of God, the language of God is stillness and silence. You know, to, do we do we hear that right? We we can be so busy, 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 right? So one of the things we want to talk about, and first of all, thank you all for coming. This is so fantastic that you're all here, and I want to make it absolutely crystal clear that you're here 
because you've been called to be here. You've been called by the living God to be here. It's no, it's no accident. You're here because you've been touched by the living God to come here to grow and to be and to deepen in your relationship with the living God, with the divine. So God says, thanks for responding to the invitation. <laughs> the devil made me do it. <laughs> Is God called Francis? So, <laughs> He's the one that got me here. <laughs> so may have been dragged here. <laughs> but you know, it's interesting when you think of like, um, we want to move from, there's, there's a part of us that wanders, right? We're, 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 are we wanderers? Or are we followers? Like wandering, it's like you're driving your car. Where are you going? I don't know. And now, of course, we want to know, well, how much gas do you have in your car? Because right? you really want to know that. So like, we can be wandering. We could be very busy. We could be doing a lot of things. And at the end of the day, it's like, what are we doing? Like, are we really, are we being lived? Or are we living? Right, where we can go into just busy, 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 and then all of a sudden we can be tired. We're exhausted. We're so busy doing everything, running all over the place, wandering, and then we become tired. Where what we want to talk about is being a follower, specifically following a specific call to this Christ, to this human, this being, this this. This uh, the very energy of God in in Jesus, calling us to not be a wanderer but a follower specifically to know where we're going, and to feel that. And when we do that, we we become more alive. We become more focused, so that <clears throat> to be clear. Like we're called. So when you think of like when Jesus, remember the story where the I guess it's like Andrew and John and some of these guys they're going down. John the Baptist is you know baptizing, and then he says like there's there's the Lamb of God. Go follow. He takes away the sins of the world. He he takes you away from being who you're not to being who you are. Calls you to be who you are. And they go. And they're following Jesus. And he turns around. He says, what do you want? And they're like, uh, where do you live? Isn't that a powerful line? Where do you live? You know, like, and what we want to talk about is, where do you live, Jesus? Jesus, you live in a state of being. You live in a way of seeing. You live in a way of perceiving reality. You, 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 you live knowing that you're one with God and you have the strength inside of you. And you live knowing that you are eternal. So it's almost like saying, where do you live, Jesus? And Jesus says, come and see. And that's what we're here for. We want to come and see how Jesus lives because we that's what we're hungering for, right? We're hungering for, I want to live in that state of being that Jesus lives in. It's like a, it's like a, it's a, a different way of being. It's a, it's a dimension of being. It's a way of living our life in a way. So you take the the very simple little things that we do. I was kind of kidding around. I went to Eckerd Drugs before I got here and I had these different things in my hand and I got these four of those little Kleenox boxes uh, for my office. And I, so there were two for $3 or something like that. And so I'm carrying them like stacked up and I'm like, God, like this, I'm going like this. And I'm going down the, the aisle there and then, and then there was a couple people in the store that were like laughing. Come on, you could do it, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, like wow, you know, it's almost like 
taking a simple little experience of Ecker Drubs and turning it into fun, being alive. And, and we were kind of like laughing and kidding with each other and we didn't even know each other. So it's like a different way, a different dimension of being. So, so to follow Jesus, where do you live? When we hear that passage and Jesus says, and I say this all the time, right? The kingdom of heaven is within you. Seek that kingdom within you and everything is granted unto you. Wow. Right? I mean, it's like, wow. So just wondering, anybody, you know, what when you hear that passage, the kingdom of heaven is within you. How, do, how does anybody, how do you hear that? Anybody want to? Now, we all love each other. We're all friends, so it's all good. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome to, to, to just even think about it. It's like, Really? How lucky are we? You didn't even know it. It took me a lot of years to figure it out, but I got it. Some people find out sooner. Keep looking, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait to get to be as old as me, but I'm telling you, it's there. Am I right? Definitely. Right? So, okay, any, anybody? I always think of Karen Vanderberg, who um, is, as we all know, um, is so full of enthusiasm and joy um, when she's dealing with the children in the parish. And whenever they've just finished something or they're doing something or they just accomplished something, Karen will say invariably, I'm living in the kingdom right now. You know, and she's so full of joy um, when she says that because I, I, I believe that that's her experience of, of what happens to her inside when she gets out of herself and works with the kids, you know, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. And that's a good point, too, to be like, when you're kind of like recognizing, hey, yeah. like I'm in the She's kingdom gone. or this is kind of cool, yeah. to like acknowledge that for yourself so that solidifies inside of you. Because I think we can, we all have these peak experiences. We all have these moments and we can be maybe cavalier about it and just sort of dismiss it, but to like pause and like really, you know, take that in. So you know? a little bit like maybe getting rid of your ego. Yeah. And replacing it with what really should be awareness. Yeah. Because ego can be nasty. It's all about me. Yeah. Yeah. My so ego is not my amigo. Write that down. George, we got a sign. <laughs> My, your ego is not your amigo. That is excellent. We're definitely putting that on sign. the sign. Yeah. All right. uh, I'm actually watching a show on Netflix called um, The OA. It has nothing to do really with God, but they live in another dimension. And when you talk about that, it's it's like a very interesting series that they don't they don't die when they die when you think they die they are actually in another dimension inhabiting yet maybe another body so i don't know it's sort of along those lines yeah it's, it's an interesting show yeah that's cool that's uh, you might like it it was like you know you recommended that show that time living right with yourself or myself <laughs> yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. It was it's you know it's interesting yeah yeah that is good it's uh it almost seems like there there's a development of that mm. like it's like a development of consciousness with humanity where they're having more of these shows about like that type of a life they go to another dimension I think we need to be in another dimension these days <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah well I think I, what I like about it is it gives you hope I mean you don't have to wait till you die mm -hmm. right? it's here now mm -hmm. you know, the kingdom is not something you aspire to <clears throat> I think when we were raised when we were little we went to CCD they told us 
You know, when you die, you get to go to the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to wait. That's great. <laughs> yeah. You want to live until you die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's such a great point, and that's like a grand love of thing, uh, the Cynthia Bergeau. Uh, I love that, man. It just like, just jumped off the page reading that of like, it's it's not a place you go to, it's a place you come from. And when he's saying it's it's within you, it's in your midst. So 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 right now, right, we're saying that we're in the kingdom of heaven right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's in our midst. It's in each one of us. And that we, we really, really get that feeling of that we're, we're really our brothers and sisters on this planet Earth, that we're, we're together. You know, we always talk about that, a good shepherd of a family, a family. You know, I kind of like that more than, you know, the parish community. I mean, that's nice, right? But family has that family, a familia, the, the, the um knowing you know feeling comfortable like you know you think about when you're hopefully you know with families and together yeah. there's a, a sense of like you can let your hair down and just kind of like be yourself you're you looking know? out for each other so you got each other's back yeah how do you know when it's time to let go when you get you know like you're in the hospital and you're dying or hopefully not dying but how do you know this is time? You know, the reason I'm asking is uh, I just came across this uh, DNR. Anybody sign that DNR? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I signed at the wrong place because I said, <laughs> save me if, I, if I'm leaving this earth. They took it as save me anytime. Don't oh. save me anytime. If I'm still talking to you, you better save me. <laughs> She's coughing. We got to let her go. <laughs> So wait, 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 wait. So you oh you you so sign? Places you sign yeah. a, a living will. To okay. Right, because I started to do the same yeah, thing. My yeah, attorney yeah. said to me, yeah. "You mean wait, not there? You you're not there? I don't think cost, you want to right? say." And I was like, I didn't have my glasses on. Because I was just saying, you know. <laughs> How do you know when God is saying, "Forget, forget that. It's your time." Yeah. I'm saying, no, I'm not ready yet. But you can't say it's. It's like a personal feeling you've sort of... Exactly. Yeah. It almost seems, again, like when you think of a relationship of trust and faithfulness, that to trust that you're, you're going to know. Like, it's not something that you can really know or figure out ahead of time. But when that's right, it does seem that people seem to say, like, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? I, I feel, you know... And they're just, if I can still talk to you, you don't have to let me go yet. Yeah, June will be June will be laying in the bed with her hand on the plug, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike uh, mentioned ego. Mm. And um and we were taught that when you die. You go to heaven. You were good. <laughs> so the kingdom or heaven, if you want to, you know, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven or heaven is somewhere out there. And you bodily die, and then your soul goes there. But I'm wondering if Jesus wasn't talking about dying to oneself, it's ego death that he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the death of the ego. Mm-hmm. Now look, we're all human beings and we're never gonna stomp on our egos till no. they die, right? And you need them to live in the world. But when you can minimize the ego and drill down into your true self, into your inner self, and you spend more time with that true self. And it's hard to talk about because I don't think words do it justice. I don't think it's possible to really talk about this. Words get in the way almost. Um, But I think it's the dying to oneself to rise to oneself. I think this is on Friday, one of the songs, right? One of the songs. Uh, what's the, uh, oh, maybe that's Good Friday. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know, you want to find yourself in the, the, Friday. Yes, the Friday. So, not this Friday, but Good Friday. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a costume where he basically is saying, if you want to find yourself, lose yourself. Yeah. If you want to gain true life, die to self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you all thought that you had to die. Right. You get to have right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So, so going along what you were saying, like that, the kingdom of heaven is an experience now, right? Anybody struggling with that, or do you hear that? I mean, I think that's a pivotal thing. That that that's like kind of the the one of the essence of our first uh, week here, the kingdom of heaven. That it's it's like it's living in this state of being that's now. You know, and when you again, when you really look at like it's such a shame when you look at religion and I, I, I can't stand it when you hear that, like, you know, um, you know, and, and and God bless Franklin Graham. He's Billy Graham's son and they're sending all these blankets and all these wonderful things over to the Ukraine. And that's all wonderful. But sometimes it's almost like we're going to give you all these blankets and all this food and everything like that, because now that we got you there, now we want to set you up with do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because we want you to save. They have that sense of feeling that to be saved or not saved, you know, like as if there's like a concept of that, like when you think about that, like that, you you know, it's like, so in other words, like you have to believe the correct things. And if you believe these things correctly, you're going to go to heaven or something like that. So, so Christianity becomes a belief where Christianity it's a way of being, it's a way of seeing, it's a, it's, um, it's an experience of, of life. And when you think of like, I love God, I love God. It's like, it's loving life and loving the people that are alive, you know, that we meet that's loving God. Can, can I say something about Karen? What Kathleen was saying when Karen does something with the children, she has that joy. She has, she's joyful period. Yes. But that's like what you're talking about. She's got it. Yeah. And it, you know, all the time, but it comes out like if you do something really good for somebody, um, I think you get that feeling, you know, those endorphins or whatever that make you feel good. That's probably what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, along the lines of something what Joe said, right? I find, and I, and I promise you that I practice to the best of my ability to be as spiritual as I can be, but I fall short regularly. And right along the lines of what you're saying is I experience for me, especially when I'm what I, what I call not living in, you know, the sunlight of the spirit or, or on my spiritual beam that I like to, you know, which is really nothing else. But then a, a, a perception of how I see things mm-hmm. when I'm not there, it's helping somebody else that brings me back. So it's like taking the emphasis off of me and it could be completely random. You know, mm-hmm. with regards to a phone call or mm-hmm. or just a conversation, that's when I experience. You know that that's where, you know, I can really kind of experience the kingdom of God and bring, or bring myself back to experiencing it. Really, it's almost like a place for me to go back to. So it's along the lines mm-hmm. of what you're saying. You know, and I think that's it's, be what, it's it what you're saying, Joe, about you know, killing self. You know, the death of self. You know, Dropping yeah. Your ego. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it's like you said, it's a healthy balance on some level. <clears throat> well, what would you say we need our ego for? <clears throat> um, mm. Well, you, you, I think you have to have a healthy sense of ego, and that, even that's a difficult thing to to yeah. to, nur- to nurture. There are people <clears throat> whose egos are uh, based on dominating other people, winning all the time. Uh, 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 amassing more material wealth. There are other people who have, I think, very, very fragile and weak egos. They feel that they're always being victimized. Always me, poor me, da, da, da. They feel like the victim. That's not it. That's not healthy either. Uh, but to exist in this world, you you have to have it. You have to have, let, let's say you want to go for a promotion. So you just say, well, I don't have an ego and I'm not going to go for that promotion. Let him have it. Or I don't, I don't have a shot at it. <laughs> or, 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 I don't have a shot. I don't have a shot. I'm not good enough. It. Or, you know, when, yeah. when someone is overtly, let's say, insulting you in front of other people, right? I'll just, whatever. I just take it. I won't defend myself. Jesus said to turn the other cheek. So I'll do it. You only have you know, two cheeks. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that's oh. not, that, that, now I'm not saying that you need to go to the war camp right there and get even with that guy or that, or that gal. Um, but, Maybe it's it's not healthy. It's not healthy just to go around as, as a doormat. Jesus is not saying to be a doormat. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I think Jesus wants you to speak your mind. Mm-hmm. If you have something to say, he wants you to say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. A long time ago, I was given the acronym uh, for ego is easing God out Mm -hmm. as an acronym. So, uh, you know, I I always look at it as uh, trying to really keep it in check. It's interesting when you said that, Mm -hmm. you know, because I started thinking to myself, what, when do I need it? You know what I mean? And and I'm sure there are, I'm sure what you're saying, you know, that, that you need your ego on some level. But then I think what you were saying about, Jesus wants me to speak out. Mm-hmm. I believe when I'm spiritually fit, mm-hmm. not when I'm not spiritually fit, because I can speak out all day. Yeah. <laughs> and what? what's coming out is self, <laughs> it's not, not God. It's self, right? you know. So I think that really what it comes down to, and, and that's what this is. You know, this whole thing is designed to for us to talk about over the next five weeks is, is to, you know, really try to get uh, an understanding and an awareness to that state of being, you know? Uh, that was the, the intro of, of today, really. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're gonna get into like, so like we'll talk about some characteristics of being spiritually awakened, and then we'll can like talk about that and like during the week, like pay attention to, you know, who, where are you at with, with, with that thing? <laughs> you know, and it's interesting, I love the story, there was a story where Chuck Norris, that karate expert, he was in a diner sitting, having breakfast, and some guy comes over to him and says, uh, hey, that's my booth. I always sit in that booth. Get up. That's my booth. Mm-hmm. And Chuck Norris is like, oh, I didn't know. you know." So he got up and went over someplace else. And they say to him, do you know who that is? That's Chuck Norris. You just kicked him out. You know? So the guy goes over to Chuck Norris and says, hey, listen, really apologize i didn't know who you were he goes here i'm telling you to get out of the booth and you could have like kicked my butt you know and he well, goes wait for you outside well yeah we so said chuck norris goes like well i hate to tell you this not only could i have kicked your butt i could have killed you in about 30 seconds <laughs> but i don't need to do that you know what i mean and so big deal you know what i mean so i'll i kind of back down or whatever now is that I don't know. Like, I kind of like that. That's almost like very powerful to, to, to give, to give way, you know, of course, on one level, you're choosing to do it. You're not doing it because you're afraid you're just choosing to do it. And is that really power, which is really what Jesus did, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. Jesus becomes the lamb of God. Jesus just comes from a place of love and, you know, uh, and wanted to, to demonstrate that, you know, Mm -hmm. Chuck did the right thing. Yeah. So it's an interesting thing when you think of the ego. And you're right. That's another, uh, it's interesting as we're emerging. And I think it's good, like, as we have a discussion to see that the spirit is going to be operative in the various things that we talk about, too. So that that's a very good point that what can kind of get in the way of living in the kingdom is when we find ourselves getting enveloped in self you know, my opinion, my way, whatever, and to start to become more and more conscious of how we're doing that. Like, who was always saying, you were saying, I, I give my opinion, or... Okay, right? Okay, and that's good, right? And that's good to give your opinion, right? But then... To speak your mind, okay? But sometimes, too, you know, and, and uh, is that... I guess maybe we all, again, we all, none of us really see reality as it is. We all see it through the lens of our own subjective viewpoint, right? So if we're saying, like, I'm speaking my mind, this is the way I see it, that's, you're right, that's good. But we also have to ask ourselves, am I open to looking at it in a different way, right? They're like, Lord knows the history is full of examples of people who saw it a particular way and they were wrong, Plain and simple. Right? Yeah. So so we wanna we wanna uh we wanna have an opinion but not have the opinion have us. Mm-hmm. You know? I always think of like the, the, the show <laughs> The View. Mm-hmm. It should be called <laughs> of you, not the view. <laughs> right. Uh you know, like the, to be so um what's the word, you know, so almost Conscious. like 
<laughs> or just, uh, you know, just so caught up and like not even considering the possibility that there's another way of looking at this. So self-righteous. Right. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with you having an opinion about something, but you have to be willing to listen to other people's opinion. Exactly. And maybe someplace in the middle there is the, as close to the right opinion as you can get. Exactly. My mother-in-law had the best line. I had three little children. And, you know, you're a new mother and you think you're doing everything right, right? So she would say, I have some advice for you. And the good thing about advice is you could ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So you could never get angry with her. Right. right. Yeah. Like, I no, but she said there, and it's already two. So I don't want to stay on the Chuck Norris thing for, for longer. If you have something you want to get to. No, me. this was okay. all about participation. Okay, great. Uh, we hear from him every week. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard, no I've heard the Chuck Norris story before. And um, when I look back on that, there, so many teachable moments were missed there, though, if you really think about it. Here the guy comes into the restaurant and is real nasty about having Chuck Norris. He doesn't know it's Chuck, but he's pretty nasty about having Chuck that, whereas a different approach, which may have been less egoic, would be, hey, look, may, no, maybe the guy's got a, 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 an OCD, an OCD or something. And he just comes up and says, look, um, death wish. That's, I, I <laughs> die here every day, and it really bothers me to sit somewhere else. Would you mind moving so I can sit here? Look at that. Look how much better that mm, would have been. Yeah. And then Chuck did the right thing by walking away, but then the guy, someone lets the guy know who that is, the guy's thinking, oh, man, I, I shouldn't have done that. But not because it was the mm -hmm. wrong thing to because do. Because it was so Chuck Norris. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So right. it's exactly. very, very full yeah. of self. And then Chuck misses the opportunity, too, by saying, you're right, you know what? I could have killed you, but it wasn't worth it. <laughs> but, whereas, whereas maybe what he should have said is what I just said. Look, God, um, just because I'm Chuck Norris... If I weren't Chuck Norris, doesn't mean what yeah. you did was right. Mm. That's a yeah. Mm. Mm. So this case, yeah. Chuck, Chuck could have made it a teachable moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not yeah. to be an ego yeah. thing, but it's too bad you weren't in the diner. <laughs> 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 but no, I did that very good. And, and, <laughs> and there's, uh, that was really good. That was good. Uh, that was yeah, exactly. That's nice that's that why you back up therapy. his ego. <laughs> No, that was great. Yeah. So was, it's yeah. not what you say, it's how you say it. Well, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. But easy definition for you, though? I was going to just Google it to see what it actually is. Well, ego probably would be it's a false way of seeing yourself. That's why I don't know if there's anything really good about it, although I hear you, Bear, there's like a it started with like a survival thing, and I, I got to, you know, have a, there's like a healthy sense of myself. But so an ego would be, it's almost like two sides of the same coin. Ego is like, I'm God's gift to the world. I'm better than others. I have my point of view. I'm right. You're wrong. And then the other side of the ego is I'm not good enough. I don't deserve it. You know, uh, let somebody else do it. So that's false too. So really, uh, and probably Jesus had like a perfectly balanced self where he didn't think he was better than, nor did he think he was less than. So anytime we're feeling less than, that also is a false ego. So it's like a, it's a, um, it's a false way of understanding yourself. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, they might call it your false self, mm -hmm. right? It's not even healthy. It's, it's not even real. You're making it up. Like I'm God's gift to the world and I'm not as good as you. It's a narrative that you're just making up, and you're 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 living in that, which which isn't true. Okay. The, the def definition is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance, and the psychoanalysis is the part of the mind that mediates between the conscious and the unconscious, and is re responsible for reality testing and a sense of personal identity. Yeah. You know that? Can't well, you feel uh, good about yourself a little bit? Don't you have yeah. To, I mean, you, you have to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> you should. Yeah, but I, mean, I think you, you have a it. level of confidence. Yes. Like, yes. You have a level of confidence in being able to do this kind of thing. So, yeah. Your, your uh, homilies, that kind of thing. You got. You have to have some level of confidence. You just don't go up there and say, 
Oh my God! What's, what's going to happen now? I mean, I do. You have, <laughs> yeah. but no, I know what you're yeah, saying. But yeah, you work how, at, you how, work at yeah. making it good, but you have to think I, I, I can do this. I'm gonna because I would be I could go like this. Um, so there's a power that exists, right, superhero? There's a power that exists <laughs> within him that he taps into mm-hmm. that we all have the ability to tap into. Mm-hmm. You say you can't do that, which is your false sense of self saying you can't do well, that. Always me, huh? Well, you can do it. <laughs> if you really went to God and asked God for that power over the course of time and practice and effort, you may not be as good as him doing it. <laughs> not that you're that good at it. But <laughs> so I don't want this ego to, you know. Yeah, no, I, I don't even. Yeah. So there's, there's that. You know, I think that's what you know, next week, just to get everybody back, next week, um, this these characteristics of a spiritual awareness, right? Like we talked about it earlier, and all I was thinking about was how I've developed a listening. I was never capable of listening, especially I'd want to be thinking about what I would possibly say. And instead of being present and hearing and listening, digesting and then asking God, hey, listen, you want me to talk right now? Maybe not. I don't know. You know, that type of deal. That's a characteristic of a spiritual awareness of figuring out whether or not you're tapped into that power. For me, for me, I, I don't necessarily know. I'm ho- We're hoping throughout the course of, of five weeks and maybe some little practices that maybe we can see where we're falling short in certain areas. Like, you know, I fall short pretty regularly around my children. Like it's an area that, you know, I, I just don't, the power of God does not move me through being patient at times. So, and I'm sure people can relate. So, you know, that's, and so that's why I, I believe that you can do anything. I really believe that just whether or not what, at what level of skill set, but I do believe that. But you have that whole skill set to do it. You can do it, but true. But, you know, I really believe that there's a there's a, a, a sense of power that comes where all of a sudden you think you could do something that maybe you couldn't. Well, sometimes you do things that you're amazed that you were able to do it. Is that in a crisis or something? You could. Yeah. Because if you're insecure and needy and angry or feeling not good enough or whatever, you can't get out of yourself and show love to others because you have to have that self you die to self, but you have to have self love to let it out, right? I mean, you do. Yeah. Well, I think you have to know what your gift is. Yeah. You have to be in have touch, to. and you have to learn to listen to your yourself mm-hmm. so you can start to really be present to anyone else. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, someone can say, "I can make a cheesecake," you know, uh, but they're not really good at baking. You know. <laughs> Why bother? <laughs> you know? So it's it's really finding your own gift and letting the spirit give you. So, use you. so is yeah. it like a cultivation process that that we're going to go inside and try to cultivate? Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. It's sort of like, uh, and it's interesting what we're saying, right? So on one level, right, you have like this ego, like a sen- health, healthy sense of self, right? Um, we comb our hair, we, what we, we wear, you know, whatever. Uh, so there's like a sense of self or, or you know, if uh, if you're in a store or a deli and somebody goes in front of you to say like, hey, not for nothing, I was here before you. That's a healthy sense of like, you know, hey, I'm not trying to dominate here, but in all fairness, like I, I was here before you. Uh, but But it is interesting what we're talking about is like that there is this self that we can become like enveloped in um, that, you know, is like a block. You know, when we think of like living in the kingdom, it's it's almost just being that spirit that is just open and alive to every experience, like getting gas, going to Eckerd Drugs, going to a restaurant, the waitress, the, wherever we are, your children, okay? You know, in a way, in a way, you could say that when your children are aggravating the living daylights out of you, right? What you're saying is, what's your relationship with the way your children are in the ages that they are? And you're saying, I am against it, okay? How old are your children, the younger ones? Six and three. 
Okay, so they're probably perfectly being a six and a three year old. Up for debate. <laughs> and, and, and I'll roll with this. Like I said, I was like, again, like you want them to go, yes, father, as soon as we finish with this toy, we will put it away and take out that toy. And father, it's it's five of eight. Could I go to bed a little early? <laughs> I didn't know you could see into my mind. <laughs> so it's almost like a lot of times when we're getting aggravated, it's almost like I was looking at quotes where it's like saying, like, we when we love, if we love with an expectation, we suffer. Yes. So it's almost like you're not being who I want you to be. Exactly. So I have to suffer, make you wrong, whatever, as opposed to let me just be open to the way it is. Let me just be aligned. Try that. Let me be aligned with what it is in the family. They're they're throwing juice on the wall or whatever. You know? All right, I'll go with it. I've taken your tutelage before. It's worked. I'll give it a whirl. Huh? Well, you're, Mr. Clean. Yeah, you're coming over to clean. Yeah, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean sponges. Takes all the Well, now how old are you? Uh, 43. 43. So now I'm sure a lot of us are like, oh my God. I had those days. They were really good. I'm glad they're over. No. <laughs> we like to hear your stories. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like uh, midlife crisis. One of the things we have a problem with is you're young. See, when you get old, you have a thought in your head. And you got to say it because if you wait, <laughs> yeah. it's gone. Amen. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny, um, which is another part of this. I, I had uh, every once in a while, I give a talk at uh, St. Clement's in Matawan for pre Cana. I do like a communication thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was listening to this guy uh, and he was he kind of gave me a lot of the information. He talks about like honoring, you know what I mean? That the, one of the biggest problems in life is that we're not honoring each other and honoring ourselves. So when you look at like a couple getting married, like a great way to honor another person is to listen. So when you're communicating, communication takes place in the listening. If everybody here were turning their heads and looking around and getting something to eat or whatever, I would start fumbling on what I'm saying, where if we're all together listening, it creates the it, it creates the speaking. The speaking comes out of the listening. Yeah. So it's almost like, you know, it's interesting. There's like a dynamic in the universe that uh, I have to get out of myself. Because, I mean, if I'm like like you're saying, sometimes what gets in the way of listening is. I can't wait for you to stop talking because I want you to hear what I have to say. So we are like addicted to ourselves, right? It's almost like, are, are you done? Because, because I'm ready, right? So, so that it, it's, it's the opposite way, you know, that power comes from listening, not speaking, understanding like the St. Francis peace prayer, which we sing all the time. Uh, you know, look at, listen to the words of that. It's all about, you know, you, you, you want to be loved. You have to love you. You want to be heard. You have to listen. You know, it's all that, it's all that getting out of the self. And then there's just this experience of being, which Jesus calls this kingdom of heaven. So don't answer this question, but I'll ask, I'm going to ask you this. How well are you doing? living in the kingdom. Eleanor is exempt, but I mean, uh, <laughs> right? I mean, you think about it, right? It's a great, it's a great question to ask yourself during the week. Ask yourself, am I living in the kingdom? I want to make a commitment to myself today. Well, we don't have to start tomorrow. We can do it the rest of the day. Uh, I really want to practice this living in the kingdom, allowing life to unfold. And, and to experience it and to live into it rather than twisting it into a pretzel and it's got to be my way and what do I disagree with or, you know, um, and even the kids sometimes. I always tell the story where Rachel 
didn't want to be in timeout because she kicked the cat and she wanted to have her leg put in the timeout, not her. <laughs> because the leg kicked the cat, right? So she put her butt on the side of the outside the door and stuck her leg in the thing. It, I mean, it was just hysterical. <laughs> right? That's the kingdom of heaven right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're in the kingdom all the time, Dave. <laughs> you know what's funny all? They grow up to find us in spite of us. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so just along with this, okay, is that so the first time that God's name is revealed is in the burning bush with Moses, right? You know, who go and free my people, go and set my people free. And Moses is like, okay, but just by the way, who should I say sent me? <laughs> and this voice or whatever this knowing says, uh, tell the Pharaoh, I am who I am sent you. Right? Now, so brilliant. You're talking... 3,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, they are able to articulate that the name of God, the essence of God, is I am. Another very, very powerful thing. So the ego, so there's I am, which is we are, we just are, right? And the ego says, I am this, I am that, or I am not that. So the ego, it moves out of the essence of being, life, the energy of life, being, human being. You're not a human doing or a human having or acquiring. You are a being. So that's another thing about living in the kingdom of heaven is living as a being, living and experiencing being alive, right? Isn't that amazing when you think about it, that it is. we're alive? What is life? This breath. We're, we're so busy in it that we're not, like, marveled by it. We're not living in the awe and the wonder of just being alive. So, so when you think of we're created in the image and likeness of God, God is I am, so that we are created in the image and likeness, the essence of our being is I am. Not I am this or I am that, but that I am form of the verb to be. So, you know, when we think of God, right, how many of us were taught that God is this guy uh, up in the sky or right wherever, sits on a throne, right, like this concept of a king sitting on a throne, judging. You know, and I have school education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we right. To Sunday school, that's what they told you. Mm -hmm. Right. And what do we what do we used to say before we received communion? I am not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> yeah. And then you grow up and you find out I'm worthy. Yeah, a lot, maybe you know you're right. It's almost like when you think of like a lot of the. Uh, theologians, maybe they had like a negative ego and they didn't have a good self esteem so they weren't worthy. So this whole concept of like that we're, we're sinners, we're going to hell, we're going to believe in Jesus, we're not worthy, uh, Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy, oh, you know, 10 years old, saying the rosary, save us from the fires of hell. Can I go play baseball now? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Right. So. So we so we, we get into that. Um, that sense of God. Is this mm -hmm. being separate from ourself and that is going to judge us. Right. 
very much like the Santa Claus, you know, to see who's naughty and nice, check it <laughs> twice, you know, right? And how many of us are like, you know, I remember like one coming up giving that joke around at the homily going like, you know, oh, Mike, nice you coming into the kingdom. But uh, I see you missed mass back in 77. <laughs> you said that you were sick and you were lying. <laughs> hamuna, hamuna, hamuna. <laughs> but we, 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 can you imagine that? Like you ate a hot dog at Yankee Stadium on a Friday during Lent or something like that, you know? Right? But, but how, many, how many grew up with that? Like a, this God is like going to be judging and a guy. We all did. Yeah. Right. I gave it up a long time ago. <laughs> right. And on a now on a scale of one to ten, how much have we transcended that uh concept and we just like you you gave it up a long time ago, right? But it it stays with us, right? Yes. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better. It, it does. It's, you know, it, it, your whole <coughs> Your whole mindset changes because you realize, you really find out what's important. And and the other stuff, you can't waste your time anymore. You know, I used to, my mentor used to be, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, now I'm saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God, help me, God. You know, it's different. It's different when, you, when you're taught, when, when someone tells you that, this is the way it really is, and you believe it, the whole life changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like when you look at, like, Good Shepherd, when we celebrate Mass, uh, that you notice that we have slowly, like, taken out that Lord of Mercy, Christ of Mercy, replaced it with the St. Francis Peace Prayer, or let's just pause and meditate. I mean, not to say there isn't times we want to reflect and take a look at, like, you know, I love that thing, like, you know, how loving were you last week? And everybody's like, oh boy. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we're, we're called to challenge ourselves, you know, to, to be more loving and to be more forgiving and compassionate. But the idea of, you know, coming to church every single week and constantly being, I'm not worthy and you're a sinner and, and blah, blah, blah. Like after a while, we don't eat, we're, it's such a subtle thing. We're just sort of getting you know, beaten down a little bit where the, the, the language in the liturgy is much more uh, positive about the Christ living inside of us. And uh, may I become what I receive? I mean, that's what we want to do. I want to become that. I want to, I want to, where do you live? I want to, I want to live in that state of being that Jesus, that's what I want to focus on, you know, in my, in our spirituality. Right. question. We were all raised that you couldn't go to receive communion unless you went to confession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And was confession, you said, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been so, so long since I went to my, and, and you're asking God to please forgive you. And in you're saying the prayer, you're saying to God, you're going to try not to commit the sin again. So that's lying. Because you know you're going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong mindset. You kind of have to make things up sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. have to make things up. He's used the same yeah. over you and to over. You're right. I, you still made my I always wanted to go to church. You know yeah. what? I had a pretty good week. I didn't. <laughs> Do well, you know, that you always said, like, I lied to my parents or I said a bad word. or I said the same thing every time. Yeah, every week. And you and got three Hail Marys and three Our Fathers. fathers. Right. But and if you were up at the altar rail longer than three Hail Marys to Our Fathers, you're like, oh my God, they really sit. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. Oh, Just God. pass those up. Well, you know, but that's another good point, right? So when you think of like how long we've been Catholic Christians and stuff and you had all of that, it really didn't lend itself towards transformation, towards a shift in being toward living in this kingdom. So we want this Lenten series to be, that's what it's about. It's about, we want to have an inner transformation, a shift in being. So I want to leave here. I want to walk around this planet Earth. I want to get in my car and just experience driving my car. Oh, who? Right. Sorry. So we have the kingdom. We might not have enough of them if we don't. Just share them for now. We'll make some copies before. Yeah.
So, Dave, why don't you... 20 copies. Uh, let me just say this real quick, and then yeah. Dave's going to share that, okay? So when you look at, like, this, the I am, and you look at the story of them in the, in the Sinai Peninsula, that God is revealing that he is always going to be with his people. He's always going to be faithful to them, and he's always going to be journeying with them, and that, that God will always remain with us. So, you know... That that is another thing too that is part of living in this kingdom of heaven is no one you are not living alone that this this breath of life this this presence that's our song in here perfect example of listening yeah well you know I understand no but but right in other words that um Right, I started fumbling on what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Everybody, everybody started moving. We wanted to prove um, that he was right. Here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that, you know, experiment. To, to, you want to live in the awareness. I think a lot of times what we do is we have a problem, we have a situation. And again, maybe like an ego thing. It's like, I've got this problem. I've got this situation. How do I figure this out? How do I handle it? And in those moments, we're, we're, we're not really like living like, no, no, no. You have a divine intelligence inside of you that's going to give you a solution to your problem, a way to handle something, a way to approach a problem. And you're not on your own. You know, so that part of living in the kingdom is being able to live in the awareness that you don't live alone. There is this presence. That is such a fundamental, critical part of our faith. You know, uh, Jesus says, you know, that I'm going to be leaving and I'm going to send you the spirit. The spirit is going to dwell within you. There's so many passages in the scripture there about God is present and with you and within you all the time. So to, to practice that, you know, like you're stopping at a red light and you're sitting there and it's like, you know, let me just breathe in and be breath and it's the divine. And I'm with God. God is with me. God is within me. And keep letting that sink into your, your, your awareness. So you're practicing that. Okay. Uh, so go ahead, Dan. The whole reason I'm here. <laughs> no, no. I'm going to steal the shell here. I do apologize. For saying, I shouldn't have missed no, no, that until no, this no. moment. No. So one of the things that we discussed kind of in detail was throughout these five weeks of uh, trying some spiritual exercises. All right. Um, most of you know, and if you don't know, right, I, I have developed spiritual exercises from the 12 steps, right, that are in every recovery program that exists. This is those exercises, I think could be so helpful in everybody's life because there's just so many tools that, you know, we don't talk about at church or we don't talk about it. And this is one of the exercises that, that we do use regularly. Uh, and, and we talked about asking this group, hopefully everybody shows up for every week. I mean, it's, this is just, can't thank people enough. It's, it's, first of all, I'm thanked that I want to thank you for even asking me to do this. The fact that you even think I have something to say is appreciative. Um, if we could do this one night from now till next week, all right, I'm going to go over it real quick. If you could do it every night, that's great, okay? Um, this is a practice that I do try to do every single night. I actually have an app on my phone, and I do it. It's to a point where I could send it to somebody else, which I find to be, you know, really helpful to, for me because when I send it to somebody else, they're usually like, oh, what's going on with you? You're all over the place today, you know? So this is not getting graded. Okay, this is not, this is something that if you want to share with us and we want to go over, it's great. So I'm going to go through it real quick. There, when I say they're short answers, one word, you know, no more than five words, just quick to the point, spot checking to see where you're at. Okay, was I resentful today? Or if you want to do this later in the week, if you only think you're going to do it once, do it towards, you know, before we come back next week, right? Was I resentful? What, do, what does this mean by resentful? Was I re-feeling something, right? 
Is there something that I refeel when either I see somebody or I experience something? Okay, just write it down. Okay, it says here that uh, if so, we can take it to a, a fourth column inventory, which is something that if somebody really does have something that continues to come up and you want to talk to me on how to how to work through that, you know, there's a way to work through that so that you could put that behind mm -hmm. and really trust in God and, and move forward from that. Okay, um, was I selfish? Okay, here we go, talking about, you can see where egotistical and self-seeking come into this, okay? Uh, and you'd be shocked at uh, areas where if you really sit and think, and this is not designed for you, this is constructive. This is not designed for you to, to at night, sit down and beat yourself up. This is where I could see where maybe I was a little off, and maybe I could be a little bit more spiritual in this, okay? Uh, was I dishonest? Okay, uh, that is really you'd be shocked. I'm shocked sometimes at where I'm dishonest, right? Areas in my life where this isn't catastrophic dishonesty, but it's where maybe I, I, I had an opportunity to do something another way and I didn't, okay? Do I own apology? When I think about that, many of times I owe an apology. Where if I don't think about it and I go to sleep, I let all that go and I'm... I'm shocked, especially at work. People think I'm nuts too when I come in the next day and I'm like, hey, you know what, yesterday when I you know, pushed you out of the way to do this because I was in a hurry, you know, I apologize. They're like, what the, what's going on with that guy? You know, but, but I've actually had some amazing experiences because of that, because I've had people come to me and say, you know, what, what's up with you? Why do you, you know, why, why do you walk around this way? And I'm not always like that, but there are periods of time and I've had some great experiences where I've been able to get involved in people's lives because they'll ask me because of, of this, okay? Um, what have I wrongly kept secret? Okay, is there something throughout the day? Was I unkind, cruel, harsh, okay? Uh, was I unloving, cold, unresponsive, indifferent, right? I, I, I go through that, you know, I come in the house, I'm thinking about work, you know, all my kids want to do is see me walk through the door and I'm, you know, on the, th the third thing of what I got to do. And, you know, so that I, that occurs in my life a lot. You know, what could I have done better? Okay. Uh, was I thinking of myself most of the time? Usually that's one of the number one spot checks for me to, to, when I figure out whether or not I'm, you know, living a spiritual life or I'm living a self-centered life. Right there, that question. Okay. Um, was I thinking of what I could do for others? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, if I'm, Spending my day thinking about what I could do for others from the simplest thing of holding a door. I'm shocked at what that could do for me all day long. Shocked. You know, and, and there's an awareness of, is there someone coming? Can I do something for somebody else? You know, and, and you know, these are just small things that I started to implement into my life that started to make major changes. Okay. Uh, was I thinking of what I could pack into the stream of life, right? And that usually for me comes back to, you know, did I spend some time with God today? Because it's so easy to, to wake up and go. And, you know, and then a lot of times, a lot of times when I'm doing this, you know, we call this our 10-step review. When I'm doing this, a lot of times I'm like, wow, if I, I didn't start the day right. So all I packed into my day was work and, you know, self. And, you know, so that's usually... So then when I'm done with that, right, I usually, uh, I say this prayer, right? God, please forgive me for my failings today. I know that because of my feelings, uh, because my feelings was not able to be effective. I, let me start over. I know that because of my failings, I was not able to be as effective as I could have been for you. Please forgive me and help me live thy will better tomorrow. Father, I ask that you now show me how to take corrective I say measures uh, that I have just outlined. Guide me and direct me. Please remove my arrogance, my fear. Show me how to make my relationships right and grant me the humility and strength to do thy will. Amen. So I say a little bit of a different prayer. This was something that I pulled down because I use an app and I just thought it would be real easy if we handed it out. Just do what you can. Write a little bit. The idea behind this is that we would review it eventually if everybody kind of and, and let us give us feedback. Let us know if you think that, uh, you know, that it's helping you to, to benchmark kind of where you're at throughout your day spiritually. And then with this, 
It's going to go to the next week where we actually talk about experiences that you'll have where you'll start to see that you're maybe acting in a more spiritual way. You know, I I personally have had this experience, so it's been, you know, and I also know that this is, experience is developing, which is fantastic because I know <clears> that it's never going to end. It's just always going to get, well, it regresses sometimes, but ultimately it should just continually progress, you know? And uh, I'm done with my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and, that, and that's good because when you do think about this, you know, uh, as much as we're talking about, you know, feeling wonderful about yourself and the presence of the risen Christ inside of us, it, we are called to grow and to challenge ourselves and to, and to have self-reflection and to take a look at some of our behaviors. I know I had shed the time of being in Best Buy and it was like not nice to that guy because they didn't have what they what I wanted before Christmas. I'm like, how do you guys want out of this stuff? You know? <clears throat> and it's yeah. like, I don't want to be like that. Like, yeah, but sometimes like what you said, <clears throat> and you just poo-poo it, whereas with this and you reflect, you say, oh, my God, I was an idiot here. Right. Yeah. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? So it's to make you be a better person. I'm going to throw something out. Yeah, an experience exactly. like that, too. Don't think that you can't make the apology to, just because you'll never see that person again. I found that the next day, I get to make that apology to somebody else. Yeah. For that, right? Because I believe that I'm in this relationship and in this place with God. So, you know, now I let somebody get in front of me the next day. You know what I mean? Where yesterday I was, you know, so. So you're saying if you don't apologize on the spot, you can make up for it? I I believe that, you know, I believe that. You know, I just believe that I can, I was in a bad state yesterday and I could show a different state today Mm -hmm. to the universe, to God, right? I think this kind of helps you be more present Mm -hmm. when you start to really look at these a couple of times during the week yeah really does help you to become more present Mm -hmm. yeah i appreciate this thank you what's that would you be willing to share the app oh absolutely absolutely yeah you know i'm just a little careful because i don't want to like overwhelm people like listen i'm going to share this real quick I have feel, and I share this with Donald all the time, I have been given like a gift because I spent my life trying to figure out life. Like I couldn't figure it out. And then through being, you know, struggling with addiction and alcoholism, I was given these 12 steps that now, you know, which I worshiped for a long period of time, which I really shouldn't have because what they were was a tool to get to God. And all of a sudden I felt like I have this blueprint now that no offense, your regular earthlings don't have. <laughs> you know, like that was something I always felt. Like That's right. it was so easy for me to go through this process, you know, and, and the process is so easy, right? Trust God, clean house, help others. That That's what we do. And all of a sudden we start to experience the kingdom of God. So all of a sudden I start coming to church. He's talking about the kingdom of God. And it's like, wow. I, and then it all started to fall into place to figure out how I can get to that place as fast as I can. So that's really what, you know, what these tools do for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that, that, that app is, you know, it's a 12 step, you know, toolkit it's called. Are you, so a, are you a counselor? Or? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I, I come from a family of addicts. So, um, fortunately I escaped it, but I, I know all about the, yeah. um, the 12 steps. So. so these are the actual 12 nope. steps. No, 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 no this no, is no. all this is. And that's why I wanted to be very careful. Okay. This is just a spiritual exercise. Okay. That we use as kind of a spot check inventory. It's like an inventory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so they're, tied, they're, they're the tied in with the twelve steps. Yes, yeah, they're tied in. Steps, it's actually yeah. considered a ten step. Yeah, it's a ten step, step review, and, and it leads you into a, an eleven step, which is prayer and meditation with God. I mean, a lot of people actually say that this is the eleven step because you're actually sitting at that point with God, and, and mm-hmm. you know, through okay. prayer and meditation, trying to have a different experience. So, so if anybody wants to go into more detail, I will. But that's not what. You know, the idea behind this was, I know we were talking about it earlier. When I grew up, it was about giving up chocolate, right? (laughs) We wanted this Lent experience, and and Drew came to me. It was about giving up our time, looking a little bit inward Mm -hmm. to have an experience, to to commit a little bit more to a relationship with God. And I feel that that relationship comes from when I can't feel like I'm totally in the sunlight of the spirit. If I go down these spirit, if I take these spiritual exercises and I go through that process, all of a sudden I get back. So that, that's that's what this is all about. And I'm hoping that after five weeks, that everybody can kind of have a little bit of that experience and say, "Wow, you know, if I if I do these things, you know, it's a little bit easier to stay, 
you know, on that path and, and in the kingdom. So. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. This is truly a Lenten experience. We hope so. <clears throat> Oh, so let's end with a prayer. And I'm going to read this as a, a scripture passage from uh, the Gospel of St. John. Jesus said to all his disciples at Good Shepherd, <laughs> I must tell you the truth. It is for your own good that I am going, because unless I go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you the Spirit to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world can never receive, since it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, because he was is with you, and because he is in you. So, Heavenly Father, as we end this first Lenten series, this first week, we say with all gratitude that you give us the opportunity to come here together and to share our faith and to help each other grow. May we leave here committed to living in the awareness that we are already in the kingdom of heaven. May we be aware of how we live and experience every second of our life. And may we always be aware of you are with us always in every aspect of our life. Amen. Amen.